Hey, welcome in everyone to the second ever version of the Mike Pecky Coaches Show. I'm Brian Dunseth, and the man that bears the name of this show, Mike Pecky, episode two. How are you feeling? Better or worse than last week? Well, I was promised an earpiece this time, and you I still don't have one. Again. I didn't deny it. You I put denied down the makeup. the makeup. I denied the makeup. Okay. All right? I didn't deny the earpiece, but I wasn't even offered one. So how am I feeling? <laughs> a little more comfortable than last week, but still, I feel like I'm second fiddle here. All right. Last week, uh, aggressive, hard rock and roll t-shirt. This week, NYPD. What's... Uh, uh, what do we got going on, Mike Pecky? <laughs> well, I'm feeling? from New York, first okay, of all. Okay. Um, no, my brother's a former NYPD uh, police officer. He moved down to Virginia. Um, I have a deep love for, um, for the police force in me. I know over the last year or two especially, uh, there's been a lot of bad press, and rightfully so with what we've seen. You know, but there's a ton of good people out there, and with what's going on nowadays with the, you know, with the school shootings, with the bombing today, um, you know, we need our law enforcement, you know, and it's like, don't let a couple of bad eggs, yeah. you know, tarnish what these people are here to do, which is protect us. So just a little, little for my brother. Love you, Ed. <laughs> I love it. Well, Mike Pecky's three for three when the greatest snow on earth makes an appearance at Rio Tinto Stadium outside of a, an Albert Rusnak penalty in the fourth minute. What's the success with you and when the snow starts to fall? And by the way, why weren't you wearing like a jacket or a pea coat? You were, I was cold for you. Well, the way my mind works, my crazy <laughs> mind works, you know, we scored the goal, goal early. I was eventually knew I'd put it on, got cold, but then I couldn't put it on because we scored the goal without the coat on. <laughs> That's how my psychotic mind works. Um, no, we, we seem to be a pretty damn good team as far as results-wise in the snow. Uh, I don't know what the secret is, uh, but I know that every time early season, uh, every time these games come, we're yeah. looking at the forecast and hoping that it snows. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those that braved those elements, I know it, it was incredibly important Important to see that support inside the stadium, especially coming off the weekend before. What's the message to those fans that, that brave that weather, that support this group? Because I know it means not only a lot to the coaching staff, but it means a tremendous amount to the players as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, whether the players emphasize this enough or not, I don't check the headlines all the time, but there's a lot of reasons why we play the game we're playing in the stadium, you know, and, and for a living. Uh, obviously, money comes into it, the organization, but a huge, if not at the top, is the supporters and the support that we get, you know. I mean, these guys are incredible to come out the last year with the two snow games to have so many people there for this one, especially, like you said, thank you for reminding me, after the weekend of the LAFC, uh, LAFC game. Um, so much respect for these people who come out and, you know, and they sing, they yell, uh, and they're there for us. So, you know, to them, thank you from my, myself, from the organization, from the and especially from the players this weekend uh, marks another huge milestone for the club Utah Royals FC began their inaugural NWSL season in Orlando this Saturday Mike uh, this becomes personal obviously not just support of the women's team but because of your relationship with Laura Harvey yeah I mean you know one thing that Laura's done you know she's come in with an unbelievable unbelievable attitude you know uh, I got a chance to bring her on for me with me with the first week of preseason um, and it was amazing you know she her passion for the game her knowledge of the game you know I've learned a lot from her uh, I'm not sure what she's learned from me but I've learned <laughs> a lot from her uh, you know as far as the Royals go you know I could talk a little bit about him. I just wish that uh, Laura was here. Oh, hey, Laura. Oh, Come on. Oh, hey. My God. There Laura she is. Harvey. Oh, I love it. Go. Absolutely. Love Laura, thanks for stopping by and Anytime. joining us. Um, we were talking offset. Uh, this has been a long preseason for you. Yeah. From the very first training session with this guy being a part of Real Salt Lake 2. Starting a preseason without a majority of your players, then finally getting to go to L.A. and ending with a great win against UCLA. How excited are you that now it's kind of done and dusted, you can put all the work behind you and just focus on a game? Yeah, I'm so excited to finally get on the field and, um, and have a game that, you know, really means something. And I think coming out to RSL preseason and just seeing how this club works was great for me. Um, and then when the girls came in and we had, you know, everything that we got given from the locker room to all the facilities that we're able to use, it was, that was overbearing a little bit. And then gradually we got into the swing of things and after two weeks of not having the full squad together, I just couldn't wait to get to California where we got all the national team players back and we could finally start to put some pieces together of what we want to look like. So super excited for Saturday. You guys have a really, I think a fascinating friendship, a bond, a camaraderie, and I think a mutual respect. Mm -hmm. how, how is it so unique? How has it evolved so quickly between you two? 
From my perspective, I think one of the things that I jumped out for me with Mike was that he just treated me like anyone else. And that sometimes from you know a female coach's perspective is one of the things that we harp on about a lot is we just want to be treated the same. And I was just treated like everyone else. And I loved that. And I super respect the way Mike wants to play the game and how he set out pre-season in terms of what he wants the team to look like was the way I see the game should be played too. So straight away, we just had this mutual bond over the way the game should oh, be. I was, in, I was intimidated, that's, <laughs> right. that's why. Very intimidated. No, it was, you know, one thing I'd like to add is um, the, from the very first day that I met Laura and she was sitting with me and my coaching staff, she was incredibly uh, boisterous, you know? She put her opinions in. She didn't have any qualms about it. She wasn't the, the new one in the, in the corner like this, just listening, you know? She, she had confidence and a lot of the things that she said, I, it was great, not only me, but when she left, the staff going, wow, you know? And again, not, we just didn't know anything about Laura other than what we've read, yeah. you know? So it wasn't like, wow, we didn't expect her to be a good coach. It was like, wow, you know? Like she has the resume, um, she added some very very good insight into it and she was out there with the guys and she was you know she was doing her thing you know no it. yeah, yeah no, <laughs> Given no the business no the hesitation players, whatsoever. It. <laughs> but it was also interesting to see guys like Kyle Beckerman and of course Luke Mulholland yeah. for, for many reasons the, the English connection cool being one of them I made him a cup of tea yeah, yeah, of course. Course. Yeah. <laughs> just to see them interacting with her out there it was great you know because the big thing with talking to Deloitte and Craig before she came here officially it was that she's obviously now full part of this organization yeah. you know e evil, even level which is important to Lloyd, myself, Craig, and everybody. Uh, so it was it was just a great first week with her. Laura, you have had an incredible amount of experience, uh, incredible amount of individual success, collective success with your teams. But when this started, it seemed like you were ready to either take a break or maybe focus or explore the idea of the English, English national team. Yeah. Why was that phone call from Deloitte Hansen so interesting? And since then, seeing this club go full throttle um, and the resources that you talked about that you guys have been given, what does that mean for the women's game and, and specifically to the NWSL? Honestly, the first phone call, it was a whirlwind. I say that a lot about Deloitte. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in such a passionate way. And, you know, I was honestly on the phone. I was in Hawaii putting a surfboard on the car, and that's no lie. And he just made me go whoa, like, this is real, you know? And then within three days, I was on a plane to Salt Lake, and I remember meeting Mike and Craig and Rob and a couple of others for breakfast, and Mike pulled me aside and went, you'll hear a lot of stuff, and you might think it's not true, it's true. And, <laughs> and that was honestly like, you know, you do hear a lot about um, when people are trying to sell you something that yeah. they oversell, and that's just not been the case. That's something that, you know, I give credit to everybody at this club for is what they said they were going to do, they're doing. Um, and from a women's soccer perspective, that's all that anyone ever wants is tell me what to expect. I'll decide if I want to buy in and if I buy in, I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. And I think now that's what our job is. We've got to go out there and perform um, and do this club justice. And I think it's going to be a process. It's going to take time to think that we're going to be the team I really want us to be in yeah. three weeks would be crazy. I mean, I'd love it, but um, I think that the process is there and the girls have already seen that they're going to get taken care of. And then what I'm trying to put back onto them is, well, now you've got a job to do. Um, so that's how, that's what we've got to go out and do. Speaking of the job to do, is there going to, and, and Mike and I talk about this all the time, as a, as a manager, as a coach, you guys just have a one direction focus and you're just, you're in this tunnel the entire mm -hmm. time. Is there going to be a point before kickoff in Orlando against Orlando Pride at the weekend that maybe you're able just to take it all in for a quick second and realize how quickly you guys have put this all together? I had a little bit of that today, actually. I was sat in a meeting and we were discussing traveling and stuff. And just to think how quickly it's all come together um, is pretty crazy. But I've been in this league long enough to know that you can do great things very quickly in it. It, could, it can take time. But if you get the right pieces in the right place and you, you've got an attitude to work really hard, things can happen really quickly and in a positive way. And I think we're probably going to one of the hardest places as a start off in Orlando. But again, another club that looks after the players yeah. and wants the women's game to be elevated. So we couldn't ask for a, a harder start, but the same, you go into a same environment where the girls are looked after. So there's a mutual respect there too. That's awesome. Mike, um, 
Now, as we kind of sit back and for you personally, looking back at the weekend and unfortunately you lose even more players because of injury. Um, is, is the international break as the evolution of Major League Soccer continues and we found ourselves playing through international breaks, you know, time after time. Does this kind of come at a perfect time as we see the club stepping away from playing through these international breaks and losing valuable and key players? You're talking about this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I look at it two ways. With the current strain of uh, injuries that we have, I mean, it couldn't come at a more perfect time. Yeah. You know, I mean, where now again, Luke Mulholland, you know, kind of got a tweak in three minutes of playing in that game. You know, Bofo was out today. Uh, Marcelo's coming back. Luis, Plata. Uh, but to be honest with you, I would, if we didn't have those injuries, I would prefer to play this weekend. Yeah. You know, not through the international break or anything like that, but you know, the quicker you get back on the horse, you know, the more you have chance you have the right to ship and continue doing things well. Uh, but it's coming at a good time with the injuries. Um, okay, now as we kind of transit, will you stay? Will you hang out with I us am for a second? Hanging out. Because we, we're going to have, we're going to need a, a neutral opinion okay. when it comes kind of towards the, the end of the show because our producer, Tyler Gibbons, uh, extraordinaire, has, has something that neither you or I yeah, have seen. Yeah, but he's been pumping this up for the last 20 minutes, so it better be good. Better be good. Uh, okay, um, important question, not only of the week, maybe the, of the year. Uh, you guys as managers will always talk about doing things over, the repetitiveness, making sure that, that it feels right, you not putting on your jacket because you guys have scored the goal and then freezing your tail off. <laughs> for the, so is, because we're now in the international break, is there, is there something different that you will do, Mike, because you don't have to prepare within these five days for the next match? Well, pre preparation started two days ago, first of all. Let's get that clear. Um, well, we have, we're giving the players two days off this weekend. I mean, I'll be in the office, in and out of the office for two days. My son is going to Dallas for the Dallas Cup, oh, nice. which is a huge tournament. I'm sure everybody watching this is you know, associated with soccer, so yeah. they know it's a big tournament. So yeah. he's going to play by himself, big boy, 13 years old with the team. Um, so he's going away. My other son has basketball. We like to get away, and get, getting away, so Sometimes means 30 minutes, go up to Park City for the night, yeah. you know, my family and I. This weekend's not going to happen because one son's gone, the other one's. And to be very honest with you, I'm going to look forward to Saturday morning, because if I go in the office, it's going to be Sunday, uh, Saturday morning to sleeping past 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> you know, whether that's 7, whether that's 6.50, whether whatever it is, okay. I, that's what I'm looking forward to. And then just, you know, the wife puts me to work then. You know, I get home at 5, 6 o'clock every day. You know, she says, oh, you have to hang this, you have to do that. What That thing's broke over there. Yeah. And I say, yeah, 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 yeah. never do it. On it. Uh, it all catches up on the weekend. So. <laughs> well, I just want to let you know it's going to snow this weekend. Ooh. So, Brighton. yeah, we might have to have a conversation. But what about you? I'm going snowboarding. <laughs> what, what about you, um, Laura? Being able to, I know you haven't had a lot of time because everything's yeah. been so condensed. But since you've been in, in Salt Lake City, have you been able to explore? Have you ever fa have you found anything? Brighton's my second home. I'm Is a I'm a big skier. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I try and go oh. at least once a week. Okay. Yeah. I like the whole night skiing uh -huh. jam. So uh -huh. yeah, that's been my. Uh, are you Are you a Millie? Do you like to go on Millie to the right, or do you want to go to like Snake and Great Western over to the left? I found Great Western the last time I went, okay. and I managed to go Great Western all the way across. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. Um, so I love it over there. We got a just, third. We got a third for the party. There we go. And I'm just make, don't go after 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Wait till two because good, Mike good learned morning. a really <laughs> valuable <laughs> lesson. Um, forever. Oh yeah. Sorry. All right. So I don't know how much you guys know, but Mike's love of hip hop is directly linked back to a tribe called Quest. Can I kick it? Yes, yes you, you can, can, Mike Becky. Uh, my favorite, because before, I'm gonna preemptive strike you, mine's lower in theory. What's your favorite Tribe Called Quest album? That's like asking which one of my kids are my favorite. Well, you gotta choose, man. Uh, Everyone leans in one direction. <laughs> oh, gosh. Either Midnight Marauders or yeah. Anthology. I'll go Midnight Marauders, if, but if, I do like Low in Theory. If you had a, one song, just one song that you could play out of any album, Back in the days when I was a teenager, uh, before I had status and before I had a pager. Of course, that you would find the abstract uh, listening to hip hop. See, my pops used even, to say it reminded know. him of bebop. There you Come go. On. Mike Pecky, That's everybody. Right he played music once on the preseason, and I thought he'd just stolen a player's iPod, you know? <laughs> it was and I was like, no way that's Mike's. It is. It's uh, legit. I, but I love it all. I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I like all music, except yeah. I'm getting into country now. But, oh. but 90s hip-hop to me was when I 
I arrived. Yeah, well, I, 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 like. I'm not going to argue with that one. Top five 90s hip hop albums. Oh. Groups, groups. <gasps> top five. See, I'm an LA kid, so mine was like Warren G, was Warren like G, Snoop, Regulate. Tupac. Oh, that's yeah. That's not a group, though. That's Talking as, groups. That's as much like, as I know. You got to go NWA, they're out West no, Coast. No, you know what I would oh, yeah. do? I'd go Outcast. Outcast, okay, all right. I'd go outcast. I feel like in my seven to thirteen. See, but I, I was I was on the two thousands. I was yeah. I was see. I was a West Coast kid, so at the time, you 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 were not allowed to really like East yeah, Coast. Yeah, but you definitely like, had a Wu Tang nah. album. <laughs> You that's stuck true. it under that's your true. pillow. That's true. I Eric like B. Yeah. You don't like Eric B. and Rakim? No, I, but I don't know, man. The Warren G, the old school sounds. Like, that's that the West was, Coast smooth. Yeah, West sound. Coast smooth. Yeah. All right. That's where that's where it got super awkward. Um, <laughs> what's your? What are you saying, Tyler? I, you're so, just so you know, just so you know, I, you're so low in my ear. I haven't heard a word you said the entire don't show. Don't you love this show that you could just break it completely? Well, he and can just, cut it. He can, he no, can don't cut it. this. We got to show the people. I legit, I legit can't what we're hear. About. I don't know what happened from, from from the beginning pregame of, of this show. You were high, and now you're. You're like a mouse right now. You're not cutting this out, first of all, because before, when I'm watching... He's like, give me, give me the top five. But when I'm... Five when, or something. When I'm watching you yeah. talk to Laura, and then yeah. she's talking, I didn't realize you weren't on camera, because I'm looking at Laura, and I was calling my head and going like this. <laughs> Come on. Let's <laughs> get professionally. Uh, this is Bush League. Okay. Um, let's end it the right way, then. You and I were... We had fascinating choices about hairstyles uh, uh, when we played. I don't think they were fascinating. Just so you know... I don't think you I realize see. that oh, during okay. the broadcast, we actually played the video of you and Kim, kind of the Cribs version of back in the day when you were on the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars. What? And that went to the KSL app thanks oh, to so Kenny Neal. Cool. Look at this. Oh my Look God. At this. Wow. Look at the Look at kid. how awkward. Look at how awkward. <laughs> you look That's like you're in NSYNC. That's the first time I'm That's the oh. first time. He was in NSYNC. <laughs> oh my God! Look Lord. at the acting. I, I mean, this, all, I'll listen. I will get all over you. This is <laughs> serious, serious <laughs> acting. Yeah, by I the way, I honestly don't. Uh, wow! Look at that. Look at how. Look at how nervous my wife. I like the fresh banana. She hates it. I was just about to say they real. No, no, they were. Look at the kid. ceramic. Look at the lean. He's got the lean on as well. That was my '90s gangster oh. lean, man. Kim's gonna grab the bus, head into uh, the MLS. By the way, we, we did that like 12 takes. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Where See, this is the gold. Tits. This is the gold that we will have each and every week that here. Should, we, should, we should sell that to E. All right, yeah. so I listen, because I threw you under the bus, so I'll, I'll, I'll let Tyler throw me up. Oh, Look at the frosted oh, tips. You two are definitely in boy bands. Hold Look on. That's not only frosted tips. That's borderline <laughs> mullet there. It's, yeah. it's a, well, look at that. But at least there's no, there's no tips there. The whole thing's You've got to breathe right on because of you're course. getting two grand oh, a game. Slick. So oh, just slick. Oh, wow. We're going way back. That's are those, 97. Are those like uh, braided? Like, yeah. That's a really uncomfortable looking picture. Brian, yeah. Brian, That's Brian. A really, looks like a dirty dancing scene when we're dancing <laughs> yeah. the cha cha or something like that. <laughs> wow. Oh. Look at this guy. Look, look in Love Sweden. Head, we, that, yeah, in Sweden, they would literally sell every part of your jersey. Yeah. I'm not sure there is an. Oh, man. <laughs> Tyler Gibbons doing it again. Well, See, we're going to have to pick something up. I'm so on. glad there's none of me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not going to be. There will we, be next we actually week. tried. <laughs> we, he's actually saying in my ear, we tried. No, so. There's going to no, be no, next no. week, I promise. Uh, Lauren, we'll thank something. you so much for joining us. Mike, great stuff thank as you. well. Week two Brian, in the books. Uh, we don't apologize for all the jokes and laughs. So uh, glad you enjoyed us. Don't sweat too hard. We'll be back again next week. Mike Pecky's Coach's Show.